Yo, what's up guys? Nature from Protoculture and Shadow Chronicles back again here at Sonic Academy for another how to use video. Today we are checking out Toroverb 2 from D16. Uh, it's one of my favorite plugins from their Silverline collection. I've been wanting to do a D16 plugin for a while now because I actually do use these a lot in my own productions. Uh, they're fantastic value for money and they sound really good as well with a couple of killer little features uh, thrown in. Uh, let's dive into the DRW and check out what we can do with Toroverb 2. Right, here we go, Toroverb 2. So first, let's just say that uh, Toroverb 2 is a algorithmic reverb. It's not IR based. Probably not the first reverb you're gonna grab when you're looking to sort of emulate a accurate room. Um, that said, it is a great sounding reverb. I love uh, algorithmic reverbs, especially in electronic music production. I find uh, the ability to change the modulation and things like that. Um, they've often got these very rich tails, which I like on synth material, especially. Um, so uh, Toro Verb 2 is not really trying to be anything like a plate or anything like that. It just is its own reverb, but it sounds pretty great. So let's, um, let's just take a listen. I've got a dry piano. All the effects turned off. Uh, we just can enable our uh, Toro Verb 2 and take a listen to this preset mutiny on the bounty. So really nice, beautiful, rich tails going on there. Uh, quite a bit of modulation in that. Um, really gorgeous sound. Uh, so let's just jump in and take a look at what's going on under the hood of Toroverb 2. Uh, we're going to run through all the controls here quickly for you guys. Uh, so firstly, there's a couple of options you want to have a look at here. You have some uh, processing um, uh, quality options. You may want to set the offline processing to ultra. Uh, so that when you are rendering your files, you get the highest quality and the most oversampling going on. You have a preset protection uh, checkbox here. It will just give you a warning if you've changed something. Uh, MIDI, you can load CC maps. And then the user interface, you can switch between small or big. Uh, this will set the default size. You can also change it down here to the largest size if you would like to. Um, this will also give you uh, access to the uh, quality controls down at the bottom as well. Um, let's flick through the presets. You can use the previous and next to flick through the various different presets. Um, you also have a preset browser, which you can click to open up there. It'll give you kind of uh, sort of categories that you can have a look at. Um, a ton of different presets that you can kind of wade your way through here. Uh, if we click browse, that will close the browser again. And if you want to reload any changes that you may have made, or let's say you want to initialize the preset, or in fact save a preset, um, all you need to do is hold down the control button, and uh, you'll see initialize at the top there. That'll initialize and save, etc., etc., just by holding down the control key. Uh, let's take a look at the actual um, uh, parameters for the reverb now. So we have a global um, pre-delay. You can dial that in here. Yeah? Zero delay. Uh, the pre-delay can also be synced to your DAW's clock. So we have eighth notes. You can hear the pre-delay kicking in there. We can also go to triplets or dotted notes as well. And that'll take us right up to a whole bar. It's a nice little feature that, especially with percussive material, to be able to dial in your pre-delays very accurately so everything stays in time. 
Um, moving on, we've got two little readouts at the bottom here. These are basically the decay times the, uh, that are derived from the various controls inside of each of these sections for the early and late reflections. Um, this will kind of just give you an idea. The late time is going to be the one that you want to really keep an eye on. That's going to be how long your reverb is really running for. Um, this black section that we have here, basically this is two sections. You have the early reflections and the late reflections that you can look at. Uh, they are pretty much the same controls by the feedback for the late uh, reflections and the early reflections being crosstalk. Now, crosstalk in this case is basically bleed through from the right or left channel into the opposite channel. Um, obviously, at max, you'll have the most amount of crosstalk occurring at zero, no crosstalk at all. Um, whereas with the late reflections, we have a feedback dial, um, which will basically uh, affect the decay time along with the uh, room size or the reverb size. So let's just take a look at some of these uh, controls. Obviously, the room size, you'll see it's measured in meters. Uh, low values will be quite immediate with a short um, decay. Longer values, a bit more attack and much longer decay as well. Much more diffusion going on there. Um, we have a dedicated high pass filter or a bass cut for our reverb. Remember, these can be enabled on both the pre, uh, the early reflections and late reflections. Then we have an overall attenuation. So this is basically the character of the reverb um, at bright. Obviously, it's going to be letting through a lot of the crisp high-end stuff. Uh, you can attenuate it towards the dark side, which is going to be a little bit more muffled and more of the low uh, low stuff coming through. Especially, yeah, that's especially in the uh, in the late reflections. If we make this nice and long, um, now moving on, we've got a sharp and smooth dial for the diffusion settings. Uh, basically, the diffusion is how much sort of blur you get with the delay lines essentially all these reverbs are just um, quite complex delay systems um, the diffusion kind of breaks them up even further and blurs them and smooths them out uh, so obviously with these sharp there's a lot less of that happening um, and as you go to smooth you'll get more diffu diffusion occurring we'll stick this on crisp so we can try and see if we can hear the Check there as well. Yeah, so you can almost kind of hear the, the delays there now. If we dial in this all the way to smooth, it should add more diffusion to the to the tail. And you can hear there's a little bit more of that kind of blurring going on. Uh, lastly, we've got the modulation settings. Uh, this dials in the pitch variations that gives you that kind of chorus effect on your reverb and really that nice richness that uh, that you heard in the first preset we listened to. Uh, we've also got a uh, EQ section here. Uh, you'll see in, this is in addition to the attenuation that you have for the bright and darkness of the reverb, as well as the bass cut. You've got the single band EQ here that you can utilize on either the late and, or not either, the late and the early reflections. Um, with three different modes, you have a uh, band shelf. You can use this quite creatively or just to shape the reverb a little bit more. So you want to take out a little bit of mids possibly. 
or for example, maybe just um, to accentuate the highs even further, you have a high shelf, which you could set the gain on. And then a low shelf as well, obviously, just kind of uh, shaping EQ really kind of just to set the tone of the EQ further than the initial six controls you have here. Right, moving on, we've got the early late section of here. This is basically just a mixer section for the early and late reflections. Um, you also have a mid side mode that you can switch this into. Um, when this is disabled, the uh, pan parts here act as left and right panning. Um, you can do some interesting stuff with this as well. Let's say, for instance, if we've got our lake reverb, we'll make that one slightly smaller. And we can kind of match the early and late ones slightly. Let's do something like that. And then we can pan them left and right, and you'll kind of get like a nice sort of uh, auto pan kind of vibe with your reverbs. Let's just put that in all wet. So you can hear the, the uh, late reflections sort of um, gravitating towards the right and the uh, early reflections on the left. Um, if we hit this into mid-side, basically you'll see this would, base, would create a mono reverb, pulling it to the left. All your reverb sent down the middle. Um, by pulling out the sides, remember mid-sides, you have one is just your mid-information, all the side information on the other side. So by going to the right, we can basically make the side information louder and thereby making your stereo image actually appear much bigger. Um, it's a really nice little feature to have that MS mode on your as well. Now, lastly, moving on to the master section. Um, here you've got a dry, wet uh, balance control. Uh, you have this little locking dial on the top, which is a nice addition as well. If you are running this as a send effect, you're probably going to want this set all the way to wet. Now, the presets do have different settings for the balance for each one of the presets. Um, but by enabling the lock as you scroll through the presets, the balance never changes. You'll see as soon as you disable the lock, it's all kind of all over the place depending on the preset that you're using. But if you have the levels of the reverb set the way you want, uh, you can just flick through your presets while locking the dry wet balance. Now, um, the FX curve dial that you have next to this, basically this uh, pertains to how the dry wet balance functions. Set all the way to the left like it currently is, it's going to be a, a linear curve uh, well, linear crossfade, sorry. Um, so when you have the dry wet signal at 50%, um, your dry signal is going to be at half volume and your wet signal is going to be at half volume. And when added together, they'll kind of make a volume that's equal to either the dry or the wet. Uh, as you dial this up, to the far right, at its most extreme setting, when you're at 50% here, you're, you're basically going to be adding the dry at full volume to the wet at full volume. So you can hear yeah, there's uh, definitely a discrepancy in volume here if we go and we'll scale back to the linear mode. So you can hear that that change in volume, it basically just affects the uh, how loud it's going to be at that mid crossover point. Now the last feature that I want to look at here, uh, which is probably my favorite feature with this, is the ducking feature. You have two controls here basically off to max for the amount of ducking that you're going to be doing. And then uh, the fast and slow dial, which is basically how fast the attack and the release is going to kick in for the ducking. Now, essentially what this is, is that trick that a lot of, you'll see a lot of engineers doing by adding a, a reverb to a send effect with a nice long tail. And then post reverb, adding a compressor, which they sidechain to the input of the same signal that's being sent to the reverb. So this basically triggers off anything that's coming into the reverb it'll drop the reverb and as soon as there's silence bring out that tell again 
which is super useful for situations like when you're mixing vocals. If you don't want your vocal to get washed out by reverb, you'll dial in some ducking so that the, uh, most of the words, most of the vocals actually come through dry, but as soon as the vocals stop, you have all that washed out reverb coming back into the mix again. So I've, I've just got a synth part here, which I want to just load this up because it better illustrates it than the piano we're listening to. And uh, we've just got a initialized patch. Let's, um, let's just dial in quite a fair amount of reverb, I guess. So we've got a nice long tail. And nice bit of modulation. We'll keep things quite bright as well. Let's take a listen. So I quite like what that reverb sounding like. We've got that nice lush tail going on. Um, but obviously the lead is getting lost. So all you need to do is we'll turn up the ducking right to the max and then just take a listen to the... We'll go slow first, so you can hear sort of it at its most extreme settings. See that slightly faster setting now. Okay, that pretty much wraps it up for D16 Toroverb. Like I said, great little reverb, gets used a lot in my projects as well. Um, pretty simple operation, but uh, big sound that comes out of this little box. So I'd highly recommend you go check this out along with the rest of the D16 uh, Silverline collection. There's some good plugins in there. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found this helpful. I will see you soon right here at Sonic Academy again. I'll catch you then. Cheers. Thanks everybody for watching, commenting and indeed liking. We really do appreciate all the support we get here on our Sonic Academy YouTube channel. So if you find this video super useful, please, we'd love you to hit the subscribe button. We update the uh, YouTube channel every week with new content. And if you want to watch some more relevant content, just click on the videos beside me.